My question for you is, we say all the time, defense is super fickle. It's like uh, the 2018 Bears team that went to the, the playoffs with Trubisky and all that stuff. Like, that was awesome. And then everybody in 2019 was like, we're going to do that again. We're going to have 18, we're going to have eight pick sixes just like last year. Is what the defense is doing right now sustainable or is this them peaking and we expect the defense to have the natural drop off as they do? Um, so sustainable for this year. Sure. Yes. Let's finish this year before we move on to next. Yes. Defense year to year is what's hard to sustain, right? Like that's, that's the real trick there to be like a top defense every year. However, when you're rolling and you're going hot, man, yeah, you can make this thing last till the end of the year. No problem. And I think, um, a big positive is actually, you know, that defensive end position uh, opposite of Montez Sweat. Um, we had a huge opportunity there for somebody to come in and succeed. And the way we addressed it was with a fifth round pick, a fifth round pick for Austin Booker and a sixth round pick for Darrell Taylor. And both those guys have taken that opportunity and done a lot with it. They are creating pressure from that other side. And that's very, very, very beneficial. Like that's one of those things that's actually improving our defense. Um, and helping it grow and flourish. We still have a very young secondary, but a very tough, good tackling secondary. They don't let many guys get past them. I mean, I'm really actually kind of surprised with how well they tackle. It's all you're, you're, you're finding very little broken tackles from guys that are being hit yeah. by the secondary. And that is a very good thing. And like I said, they're all on their first contracts except for Kevin Byer, right? You have, uh, and Jalen Johnson obviously just got paid, but like what between, an, uh, sorry, we, what an upgrade. We never, we, nobody's ever really talked about this. This is the first time even I've heard of it. And it's me saying it. What an upgrade Kevin Byard was over extremely Eddie fucking Jackson. because now what you have is you have Kevin Byard being the safety blanket and Jaquan Brisker being the guy that's able to take risks. And I think he's proven like he was a sack leader. He's one year. better at it. He's much better at it. Where before it was Eddie that's got the gut feeling and is going to go in. And his gut and, feeling was like, and, and Jaquan had to be the safety blanket. And so those roles have kind of switched. And I think it's for the better. And Kevin Byard being, uh, you know, a, a long time player in this league is much better at being a safety blanket. He's much more patient. It's a very, very, very good addition to this defense and you're right it's made a huge difference allowed the guys in the secondary to play a little bit more aggressive and flourish and so yeah I, like i said kyler gordon tyreek stevenson they're on the rookie deal same with jaquan brisker those are three guys that are still very young so you know this could still get stay consistent for sure and i mean year to year it's got the potential to till the end of this year yeah i think they're playing lights out i think they're going to continue that um hell man Add another weapon on the D line if you can. I know they're not available, but mm. that would that would really. Perry Hendrickson really... is definitely available. That would, I mean, if pay, let's say if the Bengals lose it. this week, there is a foul. I'm gonna say then there's yes. a 95 percent chance Trey Hendrickson is not on this team, dude. I'm. I know we said this yesterday. If the Bengals go one and five, I'm in the boat of I think Jamar Chase gets traded. Yeah, I mean, he's on their books for a lot, right? They can't pay Joe. They can barely pay Joe Burrow. I don't think they can pay Jamar Chase and Trey Hendrickson as well. So this is the problem you get to. Like, the quarterbacks didn't take up so much of the cap. You need to make wide receivers out of no names, not have big names as wide receivers because it just never works out that way. So, I mean, yeah, dude, I, I think the Kansas City model tells you you trade Tyreek Hill away and get two first-round picks back. I think you trade Jamar Chase away, especially if you're having a season where if you're one and five and you have no shot, like you're saying, if you lose this next game and you have absolutely no shot, yeah, get some draft capital back in return and start retooling this thing, right? I mean, that's what makes the most sense. So, yeah, we talked about the trade deadline and how it's hard to predict those things because – you need to find those teams that wind up being in situations where they thought they were going to be good and they're not. And so, yeah, the Bengals are primed to, like you said, Them and the Browns. One, yeah. Yeah. If they lose one more game, exactly. The Browns, too. Man, the Browns. Ugh. 
The Bears t- two weeks ago were the Browns, but with a young quarterback. And that's the big difference. And that's so funny because that's what, you know, you could be if you held on to just, like, I'm sorry, I don't want to beat this dead horse again. But like it, it, the quarterback makes every difference, man. Like the Browns defense Huge. is the Bears defense. The Browns offense is borderline the Bears offense. It's just what's the difference is one has Deshaun Watson and one has Caleb Caleb Williams. And one's paying the quarterback twenty five percent of their salary. Yeah. yeah, right. And can't get rid of them. It's rough, man. It's very rough. Uh, if I'm Kevin Stefanski, I want to do everything I can to get fired from Cleveland. If I'm Kevin, I don't, I don't want to quit. Kyle because... Shanahan, I want to come to Chicago. You think Kyle Shanahan would want to come to Chicago? If he gets fired, yeah. I don't think there's any job in the NFL that's more appealing than the Bears. If it's an if it's a job that's available next offseason, I don't think there's any job or situation more appealing than the Bears. Wow, man. Yeah, I mean but it's probably not going to be available. Fortunately or unfortunately, Depending on how Matt Eberflus finishes the season, I just I think you're gonna hit a ceiling eventually with that guy. But um, to kind of answer yeah, my own question with what I asked you, this year, though. I think this defense and then and I I want to make fun of Matt Eberflus so badly for hits principles and all that stuff, but like Jesus Christ, three years later, everything he says that he wants to do as a team, he's doing it, hustling to the ball. Nobody's taking plays off. Everybody's. It's just like back to 06 Bears where, you know, you see those highlights where like six guys were just jumping on top of one running back and it's just yeah. never going anywhere. And I wanted to make Matt fun of Matt Eberflus so bad so early. And I agree. And I, I think generally speaking, he's still bottom. He's in the bottom 10, per, uh, 30% of the coaches in the league. You know, if there's 32 head coaches, I think he's in that bottom t- uh, 12. There's 20 head coaches probably that make more of a difference or an impact than he does. But, um, I mean, it's working on defense, at least. He's probably going to – if he gets fired, he's going to be an absolute elite defensive coordinator for somebody. In the past, maybe I did kind of undervalue um, the team not falling apart when they should have. You know what I mean? And and stringing yeah. together and constantly – because after that uh, Lions game where they had the 28-point lead and they gave it up, so they're not ever going to play that hard again. And they did. They came out the next week against the Vikings and had four more turnovers. So, yeah, um, maybe that is valued a little bit more because these guys are playing tough, man. They're playing real tough for him, and this is a defensive-led team. And um, I don't think it's the most complex defense either, man. They're not doing anything special out there. So, uh, But they do have guys that could get to the quarterback for multiple positions. You got a corner in Gordon that could get to the quarterback. You got a safety in Brisker that could get to the quarterback. You could splice in and they have been now some weird blitzes and they have been working and Billings, man, Billings might be my favorite player to watch hmm. on that defense. I know it sounds funny, but like just going through the tape and, and putting videos together and stuff, seeing yeah. the fat man go, man, and he does not get I, – I guess I have also a soft spot for fat people, okay? Right? <laughs> but, like, yeah. he does not take a playoff. Guy hustles, has success, and just seeing him even get to the quarterback last game was awesome. Um, very that guy's, Keith trailer-like. Yeah, that guy is actually um, a very underrated signing. You know, we always talk about the free agents we got. We never mention mm-hmm. Billings. He's made a big impact on that defensive line. Dexter has been showing up, too. Mm. You know, we got some good pressure up front, and um, it's important. They're clicking. They're really clicking, and I, I don't know. I like what I've seen. It's of one of the that. biggest conversation pieces that we had in the off season, and it's just absolutely irrelevant now that the season has started. It's like, who's your next pass rusher? Who's you going to be the guy getting pressure? It's just – it doesn't matter. The rotation is so solid that every single play, there's just – a solid, solid amount of pressure. That's probably the strongest part of your defense at this point. And it is, it is, you know, it's one of those things where we need to say, I'm sorry, kind of thing. Like everybody yeah. does the na- national media, local media. We were, that was like one of the big three concerns. Everybody needs to say like, sorry, you guys did have it under control. Everybody was wrong. 